Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Hello, Tansy, it's Starling. Thought you might telephone this evening. And you know that the Chinaman broke jail last night. So you better disappear for a while. I can't spare anyone to protect you. Like to bet that he'll never find me? Where is he? Come on, bitch. You better tell us where that fat cop friend of yours is. Or I'll see you never walk again. I was told that you're interested in going in with me. That's why we're all here. No, he's still out, though I'm sure we'll get him soon. I got one piece of interesting information for you. It's on the grapevine that he's joined up with Frank DiMaggio. Uh, 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 let me go. Got a message for you from DiMaggio. Uh, 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 no! Now our normal collections have been down somewhat. I gather we have a client who's refusing to pay, a fella named Natalia. The point is, I'm going to have to break one of your legs. Now, if I break the right one, you won't be able to drive, and that ain't fair. So I'll give you a break and break the left one. Come on. What the fuck? It's the only possible way to bring everything to a head. Sure, in your opinion. But then your idea of justice, Tansy, is a morgue full of bodies. Do you have some kind of plan? Just gotta be patient, that's all. And I've got all the patience in the world. That's why people call me the Chinaman, kid. You know what's gonna happen if our friends find you. I'm still not going. All right, but remember, it's your skin, my sweet. This Chinaman has broken my balls once too often. Capish? Sure. Frank, the way things stand, this city is too crowded for the two of us, and it's beginning to bother me. That's so. Yeah. So I've decided it'd be better if you went back to New York and left Rome to me. I mean, can you imagine the chaos and killing? If Maeto takes over here, he'd rip this town to shreds. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. If we let him grab the crown, he'll reign over a sea of blood. And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for number 17, disc 17 of the 88 Films Italian Collection series. This is The Cynic, The Rat and the Fist, which came out in the year of our Lord 1977. 
The blurb on the 88 Films website says, Luigi Chinaman Miato, played by Thomas Milan of Syndicate Sadists, bursts free from the big house and sets in motion his revenge on the man who put him there, the legendary Inspector Leonardo Tanzi, played by Maurizio Merli uh, of Convoy Busters. When an assassination attempt leaves Chinaman believing the heroic officer dead, Tanzi uses his newfound anonymity to bring down the numerous crime organisations that are helping ruin his beloved city. This blistering sequel to Rome Armed to the Teeth co-stars cult favourite John Saxon of Enter the Dragon fame and is once again helmed by the notorious Umberto Lenzi who directed Deep River Savages. The Cynic the Rat and the Fist is a bravado piece of filmmaking and one of the finest examples of the popular police genre, because we're not pronouncing that word, uh, and marks its high def debut thanks to ET8 Films. Now the release itself uh, comes with an HD transfer from the original camera negative, restored English soundtrack, restored Italian soundtrack with English subtitles, Mike Malloy on the cynic and yes, the rat and the fist, so that's an interview, um, the cynic, the rat and the sadist, an interview with Thomas Milan, and armed to the teeth again, an interview with Umberto Lenzi. Uh, I will say this, interviews are great, and uh, once again it's great to see 88 films putting a bit of time in some of those special features where they can get them, it is always greatly appreciated. I will also say one of my biggest frustrations happened in this movie. Uh, it is a common thing, not just with the eight films, but with some other um, some other companies out there. So what they do is, yes, they give you brand new transcribed English subtitles along with the Italian soundtrack. However, if you're like me, sometimes there's a lot going on in your household, so you put on the subtitles when you're watching the English soundtrack from time to time, depending on how good the dubbing is. I always say, check out that Italian uh, render and shove on some English subtitles. Uh, but if, you know, the dubbing's not bad, which it wasn't in the case of this movie, you shove on the old English soundtrack, maybe there's a lot of nonsense happening in your house, maybe you've got a child and three dogs. So you shove on those English subtitles, only to find out those English subtitles are subtitles of the Italian soundtrack, and no one has done English subtitles for the English dub and as a result what you're reading on the screen is at times not close to what the characters are actually saying in English. I know it's a minor gripe but it is one that appears all too frequent on these and if you are commissioning people to do some English subtitles for your Italian soundtrack I would say it is beneficial to do English subtitles for your English soundtrack as well. Um, like I say minor gripe but if you're going to go to that effort it's not, I wouldn't say, it's not a huge stretch to go the extra mile and put them in as well. So, 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 uh, let's, let's jump back to this one. So, as you will remember, disc number 16 was us looking at another one of these uh, police procedural sort of Italian genre sort of thingy movies. Um, and I am, I'm starting to come around to them. Uh, I wasn't. To be to be fair and honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of of the genre per se. I'm, I'm more into a bit of the the wonder that you get when you watch some of those fantastic jelly out there. I like the police procedural aspect about this one. Obviously, they're moving over into kind of dirty Harry territory with these sort of movies. And at first I wasn't sold. The more I'm watching them, the more I'm getting into them. Very similar to how I got into to Jell. Um I, I find myself enjoying a lot of the cheese. Uh, the previous episode, we covered one which I said was overtly mean. And we followed the criminal a lot in a way which I didn't quite like. And I, I didn't see what the redemption was. You need a good cop or a dirty cop to bring down a dirty villain at times and you need strong character actors on both sides which you get in the cynic, the rat and the fist. I will say this about their cast and their cast and it's absolutely brilliant here. Uh, Thomas Milan is um, Luigi Chinaman Miato or just known as Chinaman through most of this movie although that is never really explained why he's called that is absolutely reprehensible in a way that I kind of love 
He has some quirks that I kind of love as well. Um, he's the sort of guy who I think comes across as this really intelligent, above average criminal who comfortably leans into how sadistic he is from time to time and when people feel they're getting the reasonable side of him he will at a turn twist into something a bit more sinister there's a great one where he's trying to extort money at someone and it looks like the guy's going to get one more day one more day to bring that money in and he's like right what kind of car do you drive is it an automatic and the guy's like yeah right he's like well you'll need your right foot for the brake pedal but you don't need your left foot for the gears so we'll just break your left leg and the guy's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, yeah, we're going to have to do this. We're going to have to set an example. And um, I, I kind of love that about him. He's he's He also has this weird calling card of sending out, um, like, funeral cards uh, to people he's going to kill, which is what he does essentially very early on against Leonardo Tanzi, played by Mauricio Merli. Um, this is a guy that's put him away. He hires an assassin to kill him, the assassin shoots him in the shoulder and gets startled, it thinks he kills him, the police play it off as, oh we've lost our, our great detective, and then he goes undercover, now undercover in these sort of movies means that he does not change his appearance at all, he still lives in the same area that he lived in, um, and still makes contact with all the people that he made contact with before, but he's dead, uh, which I kind of love, I mean it's this way of, well, like the police said he was dead, so... There we go, that's case closed. Um, and he starts to kind of ramp things up. He's not a particularly nice guy, even though he's he's kind of trying to fight crime. He's, um, he's pretty bad. There's a great juxtaposition in one scene where he sees a man beating up a woman. And he's like, Why don't you pick on someone of your own sex? You know, and then beats the fuck out this guy, right? And you're like that, oh... You know, Leonardo Tanzi stands up for the, the woman. He's a protector of women. And then later on, he's questioning a woman and he fucking slaps her across the face. And I'm like, surely you are, like, the biggest hypocrite ever, Inspector? Because you're preaching with one hand and slapping with the other. Uh, which I, I found surprisingly weird. But, like, once again, tonally, 70s Italy has a lot of these gender issues which uh, make the movies on some hand endearing, but another hands quite dated and quite uncomfortable to watch if I'm honest so we have that aspect going on as well I will say this about the movie I thought at times it ramped up in a way where I thought we were going to get a bigger ending to this movie but it kind of ends like a lot of police movies end regardless what country makes them it ends out with a shootout in an abandoned area um, and that was slightly frustrating because Chinaman is such an interesting villain and we find very very quickly that he is trying to take over the, the whole of Rome and the only way he can do that is by at first paying his dues to this um, New York crime leader played by John Saxon uh, who is over kind of really running the show and Chinaman sees himself as kind of upstaging and overthrowing him to take over the whole operation in Italy and it's you know it's going to build up to this this kind of power play so to speak which doesn't really play out the way Chinaman wants it to play out but in a way that I kind of got behind even to the end Chinaman is a great villain uh, in this movie and Tanzi is a kind of over the top Dirty Harry-esque sort of character who you know will slap someone and shoot first before asking a question. Uh, John Saxon is brilliant in this movie, this is during that time period that Saxon was churning out like hundreds of performances and movies and you know you know what you get with him, he's a good stalwart actor, he's delivering what he needs to, no more than that. At times he's a bit you know chewing the scenery but I kind of get behind it. Um, so that, all that aspect is great. Umberto Lenzi behind the camera gives you things that are for comfort. The amount of zooming on face shots is so funny. Um, there's a scene right at the beginning where uh, Inspector Tansy gets his, you know, his eulogy card and opens it up, and we zoom in on the card so we can see what he's reading, and then we zoom in on the calendar to see what the date is because obviously it's his funeral dates. 
the following day, I think. Zoom in on the calendar as well, and then zoom in on the faces, and you get that all the way through it. It's so close to kind of 60s, 70s uh, martial arts, kind of Hong Kong martial arts movies of when the villain comes in, we get this zoom in on their face. It's, it's kind of wonderful. And Lindsay, regardless of what you think of his um, his catalogue of movies, he's a, he's a great director. Yes, his storytelling at times feels a bit like ground trodden, but I, I think he does some wonderful things here. I think some of the cinematography is great. I think the storytelling for the movie, I mean, it's an hour and a half. This You could still chop ten minutes out of this movie and I would still feel that there's maybe five more in here as padding. I think that could be removed out as well. Um, and then when you fling into the background of this one that we have a, a really quite awesome score by Franco Michelizzi, I think is how you pronounce his name, um, who did a lot of these kind of genre police procedural stuff in the 70s and had a huge career actually a career that spanned like about 40 years or something uh, the score really works with this movie i kind of love that as well i get into uh, I, you know i bounce along bob my head along with the, the the stuff that's happening it's just it's everything that last well two weeks ago i was struggling to get my head around stylistic choices and uh, character choices are all kind of resolved here my only issue overall with the, the the cynic, the the rat and the fist, is that I don't think it's as daring enough. But it's it's solid, solidly written. It's very well acted. Um, it's very well shot. It's a good story. It's a reliable movie. Weirdly, it's you know it's a, it's a comfort movie on quite a lot of levels for a genre like this. You can kind of just sit down and just let it go and just not really have to do too much to watch this movie, which feels like a relief in that the last couple we've done uh, for the eight films Italian collection have been totally all over the place. Alien 2 was a movie that just felt like it dragged on forever. Um, and you know, and last week's movie kind of felt like, like I say, tonally it was all over the place. And it didn't make me happy watching it. I felt like there was glaring issues. None of these are present in this one. And I kind of loved that. I thought that was really good. And uh, in terms of solid releases in the catalogue thus far, this is kind of up there within the 88 Films collection in, in the top tier. Not because it does anything remarkable, it just it manages to do everything really, really well all the way throughout the movie. There's no part of the movie where this really shits the bed. And most of the titles we've covered thus far have had moments where I'm like, oh, it's kind of cringy. Oh, I don't know what we're doing here. Oh, this is totally bad. Um, this one just maintains a, a steady quality all the way from start to finish. And that's kind of relief. It's one that I would definitely recommend and it's one that I'll definitely check out again. In terms of my rating for this one, it's a four. It's a, it's a solid, solid four. Really, really like this movie. Doesn't get some of the higher, loftier grades of some of the others that we've covered thus far in the series. But I think where there are moments in other movies where I'm totally wowed by and then I kind of have to hide the bits that I dislike, this movie's just a, a, an easy, easy, easy watch. Um, it makes me happy all the way through. So yeah, I really like this one. Four out of five for The Cynic, The Rat and The Fist.